This is a first part of animation tutorial. I shall create a jumping ball on a dashboard of the truck. I load static geometry from the model file, so ensure the merge models option is toggled off. I hide unnecessary objects and load animated model into the same scene. The merge models option is still toggled off. Ignore the warning about bones and IDs, it will be explained in the next part. Hide the glass. Here they are, all gauges needles, the steering wheel, and the rest of animated parts. The animated scene always starts from special object named root. Each object in this hierarchy has its own ID number assigned. I toggle isolated and open properties page. Expand external state branch, and you can see the ID value assigned. In order to create additional animatable object, I want to find the last value used as ID. So far it looks like 35 is the last used. I toggle off isolated mode. Pick select, by ID. Specify only exact matching and 35. As you see in properties. The respective object is selected. I deselect. Then select, by ID, and set 36. As you see, nothing appears in properties, so this ID value is not used. I create a small ball using sphere tool. Then select this object, and assign ID 36. And press apply. Place it onto dashboard. I want to assign the same material as the dashboard, so I select the dash fragment, and check material used on its polygons. It's third plastic gray. I select the sphere, locate this material in materials browser, then drag and drop it onto scene selection entry. It's now assigned to sphere object. Ensure sphere has diffuse color and vertices format. Assign Pervertex Color Paint. Bright gray is preferable. Well, some ProLid color will look much better. Choose gray color for the light and black for shadows. OK. Place sphere into hierarchy of the root node. I unhide animation controls and load steering wheel animation. It has two tracks number four and number thirty. Track number 4 has no animation controls, unaffected object does not animate. Track number 30 has rotation control keys, and will probably animate the steering wheel. I remove animations from editor window and check properties of tracks. As you see, each track has respective ID value assigned. This is the ID of the object the track will control in game. I drag and drop root node onto animation. And pick. Match by ID. This will assign objects with ID value, onto tracks with the same ID. As you can see, track number 4 controls joint 36. That's because their ID has matched. Here it is. And track number 30 controls joint number 1. Here it is. I put it on isolated. As you can see, it's the steering wheel object. This animation will have an additional track that will control the sphere. I create new track. Rename it to Ball. And specify ID 36. This ID I have assigned to the sphere earlier. I toggle the free mode button. This will prevent the animation track to affect position and rotation of respective objects. 
The free mode is usually toggled while creating or adjusting animation. If it's not toggled, you might be unable to move or rotate objects, since these changes will be suppressed by animation track. I drag and drop sphere object onto respective track. As you see, from now on the track controls the sphere object. Put animation into editor window. You can see the old tracks with keyframes, and an empty track for sphere object. I disable old tracks, so they will not get affected while animation for sphere is assigned. Set the time frame to the last keyframe of an old animation, and press the set key button. Then set the keyframe at the zero time. Enable steering wheel animation track, locate the midpoint of animation, and set current time there. Disable wheel track, and set the key there too. I remove unnecessary tracks from editor. As you see, they are still disabled and not affected during editing. Since no rotation of the ball needed, I toggle it off, and resize position tracks field. I move the sphere on world space vertical axis. That's the highest point of the amplitude. And set it as the keyframe sometime after midpoint. And about the same time before midpoint. The way the amplitude on vertical axis is interpolated. But it will not behave this way in game. I select the full range of keyframes, enable properties, and change interpolation to linear. Right double click to deselect. You can use the move tool to adjust position of keyframe. Then I create additional frames using set key button. Then pick adjust tool, and refine value for vertical axis position. I create a sort of zigzag amplitude, so the ball will raise up and fall down. Disable free mode and drag the slider to see an animation. The movement up and down does not look like jumping. I zoom the time frame, and create additional frames near the lowest amplitude position, and near the highest amplitude position. I use double click on time frame ruler, so the keyframe created at specified time is interpolated to the neighbors. Then I resize the track editing sheet, and use adjust tool to refine vertical position on newly created frames. The ball should hang for a longer time next to highest point, and it should come and pass faster at the lowest point. Then do the same on the rest of jumping phases. The amplitude on this axis looks like bumpy waves. Take a look at the playback. OK. I save the animation in a mod folder, so it will suppress original steering wheel animation. Then I export the animation scene into the mod folder. So the scene with ball object will suppress original animated scene. Then test in game. When you turn the wheel, the ball jumps on a dashboard.